So the Chicago Bears have a forgotten player that's finally ready to roll, and I think it's huge. And with all this talk about the Jaden Daniels injury coming into this game, the Bears have some injuries of their own heading into the game against Washington. This is a big game, and as you know, it was recently flexed to a late afternoon spot. Um, so it's going to get a national audience. And now we've got Brisker and Gordon out with injuries. And a player we all forgot about is ready to play, and that's cornerback Terrell Smith. In the general media, this is kind of a blip, but I think it's a pretty big development, and Terrell Smith is going to get playing time immediately. And the reason this is a big development is because we also have Tyreek Stevenson. He's coming off a calf injury and some load management. That is going to be the wise thing. And compiled with the other injuries, Having Smith back, a guy that can come in, fill in without missing a beat, it's just a really great thing. And he's a heck of a player to have on your roster to just plug in. So let's kind of look back on who we have in Smith. So kind of in the secondary last year, GM Ryan Poles, he decided to invest two draft picks into an already really good unit. And he selected, as you know, cornerbacks Tyreek Stevenson and Terrell Smith. So from the very start of the season, uh, off-season workouts into training camp, eventually the regular season, Smith made a really strong impression on us as fans and the coaching staff. He played a really valuable role on the Bears, and I think that's going to continue for the future. He didn't play like a guy, to put it mildly. He didn't play like a dude who was a fifth-round pick. So there was kind of a logjam at cornerback. He was forced to sit behind names like Stevenson, Jalen Johnson, Gordon. But he just ended up showing that he's just a hard worker. He came to Hallis Hall every single day with a learner's mindset. And he's always been eager to improve. And that kind of went back to his college football days at the University of Minnesota. He started 48, got 48 games for the Golden Gophers, and he was there for five years. And during that time, he developed into a really tough and scrappy, scrappy DB. He was willing to take on bigger wide receivers, and he just plays with an aggressive mindset on every play. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. And the Bears have found a hidden gem in Smith, and he gets a show it this weekend. He can play in the slot or on the boundary. There was talk last year that he could even slide into a safety role. And uh, he just gives the defense a lot of flexibility. And with Gordon and Tyreek Stevenson having load management on top of the Gordon injury, a player with that type of flexibility is just huge. I mean, he can play nickel. He can play. <laughs> it's just you guys get it. And as far as his rookie season, Let's look at let's look back on him missing. He missed about a month of the season. He dealt with an injury, but when he did get healthy and he played, big impression. Good locker room guy. He started four games as a rookie, 49 total tackles, three tackles for a loss, and one forced fumble. But the main quality that Smith showcased in 2023, that was his aggression. He never backed down from any challenge that was put in front of him. And his best game of the season, that came in week three against the Kansas City Chiefs. And you guys remember, that was a terrible game. I think it was so bad that the network decided not to show the whole game and they went to something more competitive. It was so bad. But he started to make a name for himself in that game. He had 10 total tackles, one pass breakup, and he just got the gain. He just got the respect and the trust of the coaching staff during that game. And then looking at his snap counts, he started to get more playing time on the defensive end of the ball. He was also involved in special teams, but he played 377 snaps on defense, and he got a grade of 69.6 from PFF. That is well above the average for a defensive back that's drafted on day three. I mean, he really outperformed his draft spot, draft stock, excuse me, just a willing tackle, a tackler. He can become a ball hawk in this secondary. And I think his rookie season proved he's got a penchant from, for always being around the ball carrier. He's always there to make a play. And that's, that's like a really underrated thing that coach Flus looks for. And I think Smith passes the eye test on that. 
And also, I want to kind of highlight cornerbacks coach John Hulk. He's just been incredible. I want to recognize him. And I want to go to the story on Windy City Gridiron, kind of going through the injuries and what we're looking at. Uh, you guys can peruse that at your leisure. <laughs> Windy City Gridiron is the gold standard here, and I always want to give him props. So this coaching staff. I think this coaching staff, along with cornerbacks coach John Hoke, uh, it's starting to look like it's starting to look like an elite unit. Um, the second half is going to actually tell us the whole story, but I think this is looking like an elite coaching staff. And to hear it from Coach Flus, I would say the entire secondary staff. Uh, you've got David Overstreet. He's coached Nichols and has been with me since Missouri. I'd say to him too. Also, Andre Curtis is the best safeties coach in the league. He's proven that being able to put guys in and plug guys here and develop guys. Then, of course, John Hulk. He's coached a bunch of great quarters, all pro quarters. So these guys all work together. They really make up our secondary in terms of the coaching piece of it, the continuity piece of it. These guys have just done a really great job here. And I agree. So we're kind of looking at this game, kind of the review. No brisker with a concussion. Loss of Gordon with a hammy. Tyreek Stevenson on some load management. We can figure all be well due to the performance of the replacements, right? Against Jacksonville. Does that give us some insurance? Because we have Josh Blackwell at slot corner. Elijah Hicks is going to play some safety. And both players came up with takeaways in the win over Jacksonville. Hicks got a fumble recovery in the second half. Blackwell, an interception to Trevor Lawrence. Coach Flus is giving them more props, and rightfully so. And I just want to talk through this again. Let's, let's read the quote. I think I said it prior to the Jaguars game. Those guys were going to step up and step in and do a really good job. And they did. It's because they've been in our system. They know how we operate. They know the fundamentals and the basics of our system. So to plug and play these guys in here, it wasn't that big of a step for them. So you got Hicks. He's played games first before. Jalen Jones had played games. Yeah, he contributed as well. And Josh Blackwell, he's been in there now. He has been part of this for three years. So for them, it was pretty easy in terms of executing the fundamentals, knowing where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there relative to the run calls, run fits, and also the pass fits as well. And with all those injuries, sure, I trust our subs. They looked more than competent. But getting Smith back to compensate for Tyreek being hurt, um, still recovering a little bit as he's still going to play through it. Just a really good development. And we're also talking about Jaden Daniels a lot leading into this game. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? The thing is kind of looking at the matchup and looking at the Washington coaching staff. They are going to keep the same scheme regardless of the quarterback that's going to be in. So it doesn't really affect the Bears preparation that much. If we look back to their game last week, uh, when Daniels went out, Mariota, there's a name from the past. Mariota is the starting quarterback once again. Uh, when Mariota was in. Washington didn't really deviate even from the play calls, the scheme that they ran. And I think they're going to do the same thing against Chicago. So part of me wants to say that I hope Daniels plays because we want to have this showdown between these two rookie quarterbacks. And I'd like to see Caleb Williams prove that he was a better draft pick. I think when all is said and done, when we're looking a couple of years from now, Caleb Williams is going to be the much better quarterback, better physical makeup. He's not so fragile. And also he's just a more rounded player at quarterback. But um, the other part of me is like, hey, if Daniels doesn't play, I will take it. I don't care how we get these wins. I want to keep stacking them because this gauntlet that we're going to run the second half of the season, we got to stack wins now. And, uh, we could very well look at being seven and two uh, heading into the NFC North slate. And uh, you've also got teams like San Francisco that look weaker than they've traditionally looked. Um, you've also got some issues with Seattle. They're not as strong as we thought they were going to be. And it's just, it's just kind of, this is matching up perfectly for us on our schedule. And if Jane Daniels isn't there, Hey, I will take it. 
And uh, whatever we do, let's get the win. You guys bear down. I'll be talking more into this matchup over the weekend. You guys are always the best. Bear down, and we'll talk soon. See you.